Okay, okay. So yeah, my name is Camilla Alberti. I am an Italian visual artist and I am living and working in, uh, in Milan. I am really pleased to meet you all, even if just only digitally. Uh, I'm so sorry that I know uh, be present in this event in person. But uh, yeah, I have this uh, residency here in Kangnung, so until the end of September, and I'm working on a new sculpture to present in GF23. So in the end of this presentation, I will show you some photos of the working process, and I hope that you enjoy it. So uh, we can start with the presentation. So I work using different medium, including sculpture, painting, and industrial embroidery, as you can see from this, uh, this slide, and all focus on the same purpose, which is to create an imaginary able to deconstruct the anthropocentrism. And so through my work, I reflect on the concept of building words and on the rule and relationship that each uh, inhabitant and builder, human and not human, obviously, define through their being in the world. Um, for me, this uh, process, so this being in the world means to inhabiting and constructing space, shaping relationship with what is uh, other than one's own organism. So uh, in a process that is consciously or unconsciously. Uh, as a space, an environment, it's never... How to say it's never finished, so it's never static, but is always uh, under construction and in metamorphosis, where building involves a continual relationship between human and not human constructive method. So with uh, with a constructive method, I refer to the way in which a particular species or organism choose to shape its surrounding, its space. Uh, for example, the human beings build their world through the architecture. And in my work initially, I start with the analysis of the human constructive meter, so the architecture, and I developed some sculptures that portrayed its like uh, clear geometry, uh, first with wood and wire, and then with uh, some vast and natural material. And you can see an example in the left part of this of this slide. So this is one of my really first work when I was in academy in uh, in Milan. And so with constructing words, however, it's just not wholly a prerogative of the human beings, but every living creature has uh, different processes through which it can construct its uh, own reality. And it's um, a capacity that generates in the act of living itself. So and in larger system, this different work consisting of uh, modern spatial realities collide with each other, merge and cancel each other out and add up to complex reality uh, made up of uh, physical and temporal links and entanglement. In uh, um, like this first corpus of reflection uh, has generated the various artworks in my career and both culture and installation uh, in which uh, the relationship between the species became the fundamental focus. Uh, some examples are here in this slide. So the first one is Serico and the second one is Ruins. Uh, the first is a sculpture which an organic shape uh, and here you can see some photos related to the working process of the sculpture, because it's a sculpture with an organic shape that I left to the colonization of 40 silkworms uh, for the entire duration of their lives. And uh, the aim uh, of this project was to establish a dialogue between uh, two different construction and spatial analysis methods. So the one of the human uh, and the second one of the silkworm. Uh, ruins, uh, however, is a series of two sculpture in which the original architecture has been uh, colonized by wild plants and mosses. And so in both these two cases, the element I had uh, constructed in the beginning became a matter of manipulation by other living species, engaging in a process of transformation completely uh, alien and different to my will and my timing. And so this work have um, show me to uh, reflect on the identity of what is uh, time, what is the meaning of the time. Uh, 
And so when it comes to the relationship with the other, so what we consider other than us, it is essential to recognize the meeting with this otherness, entering into a different sphere of time and a different rhythm of life. Uh, producing work by uh, collaborating with the other living species had led me to uh, come to term with their time, altering the fast rhythm of my work to synchronize it with um, different being in the world. And so in this sense, I consider art as a process of awareness, like a, a tool capable to opening up spaces of experimentation and imagination where it is possible to question human being in the world through the construction of a new imaginary and narrative method. And so now I talk about uh, building uh, inhabiting, hybridization, and interspecies relation, transforming and imaging, and lastly, about the um, encounter of a different temporalities. And so um, it is precisely by linking myself to this last theme that I would like to introduce the next one, that is the ruins. In the process of uh, Word making, uh, quoting Donna Haraway, that is an amazing philosopher and author, uh, past, present, and future coexist in a temporal sphere. Uh, within this paradigm, linear time can be understood and um, intervened and entangled. And thus, in these notes, are visible in the place that we usually inhabit, so in our space. Uh, Those places are the result of the process of building and abandonment of living and no living organism. They are so in a way like ruin in constant transformation. And so what is a ruin? A ruin is like an abandoned place uh, without an owner who defines their boundaries. So ruins are therefore capable to becoming a place where a plurality of living species can collaborate and find against each other in a continuous construction of their own world. Uh, abandonment in this case is really a potential strength intent to as a possibility of losing boundary to become an hybrid and permeating space. So it's really uh, a big power, the, the power of the ruin, I think. And so let me give you like a practical example so you can imagine better what, uh, what I mean with ruin. So um, you have to imagine like an abandoned house in a forest that is over time eaten by vegetation and becoming the home of insects and small animals, uh, in turn uh, becoming the um, hunting ground for larger mammals and perhaps the hiding place uh, of the hunter. So a place that was originally just only a home and house for some group of human uh, who defended its perimeters and cleaned the corner uh, from the spider web maybe, uh, sealing the windows and all the other process that we usually do in our house has now turned into a space with a multiple use. So it's, it's becoming a hybrid space. And related to this, Fuochi di Mezza Estate or Midsummer Fire, is the first physical example of this uh, theoretical uh, process. Uh, our two installations were built from a series of geometrical shape, resulting from a mixture of uh, found object, industrial waste, and abandoned object. So I assembled those elements uh, to build a ruined architecture, which I uh, abandoned for six months in the hands of other organisms, in the middle of nowhere, in a woods. And then from here, you can see from of my latest artistic research that is a sculpture series entitled uh, Unbinding Creatures, is in, in which the geometric shape that I use in the beginning of my um, artistic career uh, become um, and was has been transformed into a complex body. Thus, the ruined space opened a series of uh, complex, dynamic, transformative imaginary made up of uh, links and interaction. 
And so uh, learning to navigate them means to rethinking one's position from an individual to a plurality. And so it means to rethinking the idea of body. So we, we have to um, create another image of our body. And this paradigm shift has enabled us to deconstruct the identity of the individual body in favor of a body space in which an organism is not just only an individual, but a biologically composed entity uh, inhabited by other organisms. And in biology, there is a term for this type of creatures, and we are one of them, that is holobiont. So in this process uh, of deconstruction and reconstruction, we need like a references figures to flesh out the process of identity and uh, identity in dissolution in favor of uh, deep interconnection and mutual understanding between individuals of a distant species. And so in my research, these figures are embodied by the uh, imaginary and symbol of, uh, of monster. In popular tradition, monster are hybrid organism uh, that usually inhabit the dark side of the fairy tales. So they usually are the villain of our uh, stories. They are banned to the edge of the society or killed by heroes in a like a perpetual stereotypes in a, and hold and worn out and unsustainable plot. And so in my work, monsters are, however, the uh, protagonist of a new narrative that tends toward the hybrid mythologies rooted in the world and distant from the anthropomorphism. Uh, Those monsters are the key figure in my research on binding creatures, a series of sculpture and installation built from a process of um, a human archaeology that is a practice that uh, through which I usually collect abandoned object, industrial wealth, and anthropic element. And each element collected is like a map that is capable of uh, telling stories of otherness and coexistence because on their surface are imprinted the trace of other species' life. So um, because they have molded their shape or eroded their brilliance or polished their head. So it's possible to catch all these little uh, trace. Uh, the construction of the sculptural bodies begin with the study and care of these collected ruins and is often a long and collaborative process uh, that requires, in a way, knowledge and, of course, respect for the other organisms uh, that are involved in this process. So, for example, there are some part of this uh, uh, cleaning process of the ruins in which I collaborate with wasps and bees that clean maybe the carapace of and clothes of the construction, for example, because they are so fragile that for me is impossible to clean the internal part. And another example is with the mosses that polish the wood uh, surface or the woodwork that shape the form of the um, uh, of the maybe a root, for example, or a piece of wood. So all the collected materials become then part of assemblage made of aluminum thread and plaster bandage. And the sculpture become, in the end, a corpolium map made up of traits and stories that are observed as a place and known as a body. And now uh, I'm currently trying to transform uh, an individual practice. So all this process of um, re research of material on site, uh, like the um, uh, finding ruins on, on a place, I try to transform this process into a space for discussion and confrontation in which a community can be involved. Uh, an example of this is, is the latest project, Learning in this Binding, that was exhibited in the Italian pavilion at the Gwangju Biennale in South Korea. And this work was created following a three month residency in the Seoul Institute of the Art uh, in, in Seoul, where I engaged the student in lecture, debates and workshop and to start an imaginative conversation on narrative that can really change how human perceive their being in the world. 
And the objective of this first phase, in fact, were to imagine uh, together a scenarios that could construct the predominant anthropocentric position by reflecting on the importance and significance of the interrelation between living species and their coexistence. So together with the students, we spend hours discovering the space around the Seoul Art Campus uh, to train our eyes to catch the detail that surround us, uh, the trace of others' lives left on the surface of the abandoned object. So, um, and in the end, I asked to the student to scouring the space, focusing on the detail in order to notice what is happening around them and out of them. And so to do this, we work on collecting materials on studying together during uh, our discussion time the trace of other organized lies uh, such as little all of the word worms or the presence of mosses and so uh, what does it mean training the gaze uh, I think that is um, it's a process that it's necessary to catch the life of other uh, that's happened out of us. And I think that it's not really a easy process because it means to admitting and imaging other point of view outside of the human one. And so to do so, uh, however, we need to deconstruct like the anthropocentric bias that uh, prevents us to from prevent us from feeling an immersion in the world. And showing us a distorted reality has already organisms that stay above uh, the dynamic necessary for life. And so I think that ruins have the power to physically reveal to us the dynamic of um, coexistence, uh, they make tangible the bonds, uh, the way the words. And so I think that the ruins are the perfect place where we can learn a new way of living capable of inspiring the uh, construction we can say of a new narrative and uh, a hybrid images uh, now so i'm here in korea as i said before in the city of kangnam so i think that i hope that mine pronounce it's it's good uh, to produce a sculpture uh, that it's come from the Unbinding Creatures uh, research, which will be exhibited in GIF 23, that is a Kangneum International Art Festival, is a project under the artistic um, direction of Sohi Park, an amazing creator and her team, uh, whom I really thank for allowing me to take part in this uh, exhibition alongside such uh, immense artists uh, as Francis Ellis, Rosa Barba, and Tino Sega, just three examples, and many other names that I will let you discover. And so the opening of this exhibition will be on 13th of October in Kangnam. And I will unfortunately not be physically present, but I hope that you will have the opportunity to visit the exhibition, of course. And thank you very much for your attention. So I'm here for your uh, question. Uh, and I will be really happy to answer to all of you. Thank you.